Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Jordan. Thank you so much for watching. Today, I've got an interesting guitar for you. So, if you're like me, you probably missed the release of the AD24, which is a Grand Auditorium Taylor in the American Dream series, which means it has all solid wood, it's made in America, has great quality control, and a great fit and feel. These guitars, I don't know a terrible lot about. So, going off the specs I found offline, and the one video I found from Alamo Music Center, let's get into it. The first thing I want to note is that they have a neotropical mahogany top, I think it's called. And I can't find any information on the Taylor website about that. Maybe I just didn't dig deep enough. It does look cool. It looks really nice. So I imagine that it's some selected, uh, you know, off-brand mahogany. Off-brand, I mean by it's not harvested in the normal areas that they would harvest. Um, Taylor, I know, does a lot of their own uh, harvesting because they can kind of control what's happening to the forest and the ecosystems instead of trusting it to loggers that are just there to clear cut an entire area and then leave it desolate. So I appreciate that about Taylor. They do a good job of sourcing their woods. So, but back to the top itself, I have no idea how it sounds. It probably sounds like a mahogany top, like a 324 or like any other, you know, grand auditorium size guitar that has a mahogany top. And then it has Sapele back and sides, which most people that have played a mahogany guitar made in the last 10 years or so have played something that was Sapele. And just because it's readily available and it's used by a lot of guitar companies. The scale length on them is the normal 25 and a half inches. And the cutaway on it looks really nice. But the one thing I will say about the top and the sides where those joint is it does not have binding. Now that might not be a deal breaker for you guys. It's certainly not a deal breaker for me, but it is something to note because those guitars without binding tend to separate a little easier from the top than guitars with binding. So like I say, not a deal breaker for me, just might be something you wanna be aware of if you live in a harsher climate that is subject to a lot of change or you're gonna be using this guitar in a rough way where it could be subject to um, you know, maybe more abuse than would be good for a guitar built without certain... What I'm trying to say is the guitar might not be as durable as something with bound uh, sides and top. So, I don't know that for sure. I've never played one of these. I've never beat one against a tree, okay? That's just my opinion. Some of the other details that make this guitar really cool is just the finish on it looks amazing, fantastic and uh, the slight burst on the top um, I think looks really cool as well as I I don't know I just think the headstocks on these guitars always look fantastic I love the Taylor headstock shape and the way um, they finish this one looks incredible and then my favorite detail about this guitar is that it has the v-class bracing now I've heard really good things about the v-class bracing I have played several guitars with it and I always like them quite a bit I wouldn't say I have enough experience to tell a difference between the older models that don't have it and the newer models that do have it, but I think it's a good move because they say the intonation on those guitars is a lot better because of the V-Class bracing. Now, once again, I don't know how that works. Maybe I'm wrong about that. That's just my personal opinion based on the information I currently have. With that, my actual reaction to this guitar. Um, I think it's awesome. Would I buy one? No. And here's why. I think it's a great concept. I really like the way it looks, but you can buy used guitars that are pretty much the exact same thing. And by pretty much, I say, I mean, you can buy like a 324 or sometimes even a 324 Builder's Edition for about the same price used. And you have to kind of wait for the right deals. I get all that. But I wouldn't buy one of these because I could buy something that's just a step or two above for about the same price and most of the time like if you find a builder's edition on reverb or something like that the guys that buy those for whatever reason they always seem to take really good care of those guitars and they're in really good condition so that's not a guaranteed and maybe you don't like buying used guitars and i get that totally because they don't come with a warranty um, if they come with a defect you're stuck with it and that's just the way it is but i don't mind buying used guitars so for me, I wouldn't buy one of these because I could buy something the exact same. Just as a guitar though, I think I would recommend this, but mostly for singer-songwriters. The V-Class bracing is supposed to help with intonation, like I mentioned a moment ago. 
But for me, what I did when I owned a mahogany type guitar, I actually still have it. It's over here in a case. It's the Ibanez AE295. I would tune it down about two steps to C, sand, C standard, excuse me. I cannot talk today. And I would play it uh, in C standard quite often. But my biggest issue was always that it was just a little bit out of intonation. It just never sounded quite right. And supposedly these guitars will hold that tuning a little bit better than my Ibanez will. And I just assume that based on Taylor's, you know, their dedication to building a completely intonated guitar. And I might be completely wrong about that, but if I was gonna buy one of these, that's what I would do is immediately tune it down a step or two and play it like that. And so other than that, um, I think these would be a fantastic stage guitar because they look cool and they sound good. Taylor's uh, ES2 Electronics, I personally have never liked them, but I know that a lot of people do. And probably if I spent the time to figure out uh, the right preamp and effects to put on it, I could get some sounds that I really like. I just personally don't enjoy the use of the ES2. For whatever reason, that system just doesn't work for me. Um, and that's not a bad thing. That's not a knock against Taylor. They sound good when other people play them. I'm just not other people. So yeah, I would recommend the guitar as a guitar. And like I say, I've never played it, so don't buy one and then hate on me because I gave you bad intel. I've never played one. This is just my opinion that I'm sharing with you so that if you're kind of interested in these guitars, I'm hoping that I can push you to go to a store, find one, play one, and see if you actually like it or not. That is the most important part of buying a guitar is to be able to handle it, feel it, and interact with it a little bit before you buy it. When you buy stuff online, you risk buying something that you're not actually totally happy with that doesn't really work for you. So I guess that's all I got for you guys on this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If it was helpful, please let me know down below. That would be really cool. Uh, if you enjoyed it, like I said, give him a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. And I hope you guys have a great day and find the guitar that works best for you.